Chapter 14, A Tattler's Tale. Episode begins at night with the loud siblings, me and Varie, in Laurie, Le Laurie and Lenny's bedroom. Lynn and Lana are having a pillow fight. Luna is bouncing Lily, I guess. Luann is braiding Lucy's hair as she reads an Edgar Allan Poe book. I am reading a book on the movie of 2016 Moana. A book on the movie, I guess. And Varie is reading a book on fish. Lenny is painting Laurie's toenails, and Lincoln is speaking with Leeks. So then, BAM! My, re my remote control plane smashed right into Dad's disco ball, and it broke into a million pieces, says Lincoln. <clears throat> oh no, says Lynn, as she ducks says Lana whacks Lenny with a pillow, knocking her off the bed. The one he got from winning the Royal Woods Dance Your Pants Off contest? He's so proud of that thing. I know, if he ever finds out, I'll be as dead as disco, says Lincoln. Don't worry. You're not the only one hiding something from Dad, says Lori. Luna, Lisa, Lynn, Lana, and Lily all go, ooh. I accidentally scratched the car with my rhinestone purse, says, says Lori. Flashback. Lori is seen driving up to a parking space and turns the car off. When she opens the door, she accidentally dents the car next to her. Realizing this, she tries to inch herself away, unlo unknowingly leaving jagged scratches on the side of the van with her purse. And flashback. You think that's bad? Remember the blackout last week? Asks Luna. Flashback. Luna sets the volume of her speakers to supermax and strums her guitar once, causing a citywide blackout. And flashback. That explains why it was so dark back then, I say. I rather enjoy I rather enjoy the darkness. Speaking of which, does anybody does anyone know how to get black paint out of lace? I painted Mom's wedding dress from a dark bet betrothal of to Edwin, says Lucy. Luce, uh, flashback. Lucy is seen descending the basement stairs wearing Mom's wedding dress, completely repainted in black. In the basement are a bunch of disfigured dolls looking towards Edwin, Lucy's vampire bust. Oh, Lucy's vampire bust. And flashback. I'm sure you were a beautiful bride of darkness in your Mom's wedding dress, says Vary. Thanks, Vary, says Lucy. Anyone else? asks Lori. Lainey raises her hand. Yes, Lainey? Okay, now, I never showed you this but I have a scar on my neck, says Laney. Oh, good God. You never told me about that, about a scar, Laney. Well, why would she? You're not family. In fact, you're a rather strange individual. Whatever. Uh, you never told me about a scar, Laney, I say. Yes, says Laney, taking off her red scarf, revealing her scar in Varie gasps. The scar was on the right side of her neck, and it looked like someone had, someone had slashed her. Oh, my gosh, says Varie. Geez, Lainey, how did you get that? I ask. Well, it all started a year ago. Mom and Dad were away, and I decided to do a spinning plates act in the kitchen. Because you all remember I was going through a circus phase? Uh, says Lainey. Everyone but JD and Free nods in agreement. The old dish drill trick. I've seen that on TV, but I wasn't here at the time. I say, yes, responds Lainey. Flashback. Lainey was spinning plates in the kitchen. She balanced four sticks on her arms and one on her nose. So anyway, I tried to keep my balance, until I tripped, says Lainey. Lainey falls, dropping the plates, and they break. And then, as the plates break, one of the shards flew into my neck and sliced right through it, Ugh. says Lainey. A piece of broken plate flies into Lainey's neck, making a small cut. I tried holding in my cries of pain. Lainey ran into her room and scored, scoured into her chest. Sc Maybe I just don't know the word. Until she found a red scarf. I had also tried to hide my wound. Lainey wraps the scarf around her neck. Flashback ends. So you implying that for, well, I don't know how long it's been, but you've been wearing just a red scarf this whole time? Ever since that accident? Who cares? And I've been wearing the scarf ever since. Well, well that answers that. The, all the loud siblings go, ooh, man, you're lucky that didn't suffer an artery, Lainey. I say, yeah, <laughs> says uh, Vary. So that's what happened to Mom's special china, says Lenny. What? Oh my goodness, I didn't know, exclaims Lenny. But you're not the only one that has a scar, Lenny, <laughs> I say. Really? asks Lenny. I show her a one-inch scar cut, a one-inch cut scar on my right pointer finger. How did you get that? asks Lenny. I accidentally slashed my finger with a broken umbrella spike. <laughs> It was back when I was 11. I had to wear a bandage for a month. My parents already know about this, so I, it's not 
a secret. Because, oh, you know, perfect little angel here doesn't keep secrets. Wow, says Laney. Lincoln to the viewers. What can I say? We're not angels. Sometimes we mess up. But the great thing is, if you need to get something off your chest, you can always trust your siblings. Not true. Ain't that the truth, I say. A knock, a knock at the door is heard. <clears throat> well, not all of them, I say, says Lincoln. I have a feeling I know who that is, I say. Lincoln walks up to the door and opens it, revealing, revealing to be Lola. She enters the room. What you guys talking about, asks Lola. Quantum physics, says Lisa. Monster truck, says Lynn. Bobby, says Lori. Politics, says Lenny. Baseball, says Lynn. Joke, says Luann. Global warming, says Lana. A diversion, says Lainey. Very funny. You're telling secrets again, aren't you? It's not fair. I never get included, says Lola. That's because you're a tattletale, Lola. <laughs> I am not, scoffs Lola. Lincoln and the others look at her in disbelief while the cricket chirps. Okay, I'll admit I used to be a tattle tattletale. Oh my god. But I changed. I'll believe that when pigs fly, I say. Can pigs really fly? asks Lenny. No, Lenny, it's just a figure of speech. It means I'll believe it when I see it, I say. Everybody agreed with me, because I'm so cool, and they still don't believe Lola as they murmur to each other. Lola growls loudly and tosses her tiara aside in fury. Mom, they won't let me in their secret secrets club, yells Lola. As Lola storms out of the room, Lincoln quickly shuts the door. Lisa checks her list of secrets. Mmm, uh, so where were we? asks Lisa. I booked Dad's disco ball. Luna caused the, caused the blackout. Lori scratched the car, and Lucy ruined Mom's wedding dress, and Lainey broke Mom's plates and got herself cut. Lainey blushes. Oh. Who's next? asks Lincoln. J.D., do you have any secrets? asks Lori. Unfortunately, no. I've got nothing to hide, because I'm a perfect little angel, and why would I have anything to hide? I say, uh, me neither, says Marie. Lana raises her hand. Ooh, ooh. So you know how Dad was yelling at Charles for chewing up his boots? <laughs> That was me. The siblings begin to laugh. Begin laughing. Luann with... Wait a second. Weren't those steel toe? Says Luann with realization. The next day, Lincoln wakes up and sees Lola looking at him with a, with a wide smile. Lincoln yells in shock. Oh, hey, Lola. I say. I guess that... I guess he slept over. Morning, JD. Morning, morning Linky. Says Lola, pulling out a fancy suit. I need a butler for my tea party. You're it, Lincoln. Yeah, that's not happening, says Lincoln, as he puts his bedsheets back on. Oh, really, asks Lola, swiping the bedsheets off Lincoln. He looks up. I hate for Dad to find out who broke his precious disco ball. <sighs> Link, um, who told you about that? Asks Lincoln, realizing that Lola knows his secret. How did you know that? I ask suspiciously. Lola shrugs her shoulders, pretending not to know. Lincoln is seen wearing the suit Lola provided. Top me off, Lincoln Linkington, says Lola. Lincoln tips the teacup over. I don't hear any tea. Uh, Lincoln sighs and tips the teacup over while making a whooshing sound to make it sound like tea is pouring in. Me and Marie wonder how she got a hold of that information. Backyard! Lucy is writing her in her poem book. And Lola approaches her with her princess car. Hey, Luce, want to play drive me around while I practice my pageant wave? Asks Lola. Hard pass, responds Lucy. Okay, says Lola, driving around for a little bit. Maybe I'll go play dress up with mom's wedding, wedding gown instead. Lucy looks up with, realiza with realization as a crow caws. Lola gasps. Oh, wait, I can't because someone ruined it. Lucy gasps loud, loudly, realizing that she knows about her secret. Who told you that? asks Lucy. Lola shrugs her shoulders, pretending not to know. She moves into the passenger seat as Lucy sits down on the driver's seat. Lola motions Lucy to start driving. <sighs> that's, that's not just me. That's I had to read that. Lucy dons a chauff uh, chauffeur's cap and begins driving as Lola begins waving. Me and Marie overhear everything from the back door. Because we have to! We have to be included on everything. Because we're the main character. Okay. Later in the dining room, Lainey was writing something as Lola approaches. What you writing? asks Lola. Well, I figured if Lucy can't, uh, can write disturbing poems, I can write something of my own. A story, perhaps. Like a, like a revamp. Like some kind of revamp. Here's what I, I got so far. Lola stops Lainey. 
Yeah, that's a that, yeah, that's great. Speaking of stories, I was hoping you could read some to me. I like fairy tales and princesses, but make me the princess and don't forget the voices. <laughs> I forgot the voices. Says Lola, demands Lola, handing Lainey a book. Maybe you should just read it yourself, says Lainey. Oh, I thought Lainey was the nice one. But maybe Mom should know why you wear that scarf all the time, says Lola, pulling down Lainey's scarf, revealing her scar. Can't spell scarf without scar. How did you... Lola smirks. Lainey sighs. Living room. Lori is texting on her phone. Luna is watching TV, and Lynn Sr. is reading a newspaper. Lola enters. Luna, can I have the middle? asks Lola. Sorry, little dudette. I snagged it first. Oh, okay. I hope your show doesn't, you know, like, end suddenly. I hear there have been a lot of blackouts lately, says Lola. Lola turns back to Luna with a wicked grin. Luna, realizing Lola knows her secret, who told Luna stops talking, realizing that her father is right next to her. Luna reluctantly places Lola on the couch as she angrily sits down on the floor. Lori, can I have head scratchies? asks Lola. No, I need both hands for texting, says Lori. Oh, I just thought you wouldn't mind since you've been scratching a lot of things lately. Lori gasps, realizing Lola knows about her secret. She begrudgingly begins to scratch Lola's head. Two hands, please. Lori looks on with disdain. Me and Marie saw the whole thing from upstairs and look at Lola suspicious, uh, suspiciously. God, I'm losing it. In Lincoln's room, me and Marie are having a private meeting. Marie, something is seriously wrong. Lola somehow knows everyone's secrets, and she's blackmailing her siblings into doing her bidding, I say. Yeah, I smell a rat, and it's probably Lola, says Varie. Yeah, I have a feeling you're right. We gotta get to the bottom of this. Come on, I say. I open the door, and me and Varie sneak into Lori and Lenny's room, and we start searching. There was nothing in the closet, under the bed, or in Lenny's dresser. Why would you look in Lenny's dresser? No, fine. Find anything? I ask. Nothing, responds Varie. I then spot something on the floor next to the foot of Lori's bed. <clears throat> Wait a minute, I say. It's Lola's tiara. I then notice something sus suspicious attached to it. It was a microphone. That little sneak, I exclaim. What is it? asks Vri. Lola put a bugged tiara in the room and eavesdropped on the meeting while we weren't looking. Well, you did see her throw it on the floor. Well, whatever. I respond. She's a cunning little weasel. We got to tell everyone, I say. No, we can't let Lola know that we're on to her. We'll tell everyone at the next meeting. I have a plan. I say. I whisper the plan into Varie's ear. Honey, that's genius, says Varie. Lana in Lola's room. By now, Lola has forced all her siblings into doing menial tasks for her. Luna is playing a mandolin. A man, a mandolin? Yeah. Lynn is painting Lola's toenails. Lana is dressed fancy. And Lincoln is back to being Lola's waiter. With a moo here and a moo there, sings Lola playing a mandolin. Irate. Uh, I believe I said he had a pig, Lola corrects Luna. With an oink oink here and an oink oink there, says Luna, through clenched teeth, more irate. And the brave knight said to the fair princess Lola, Fear not, ma- Lainey reads, but gets cut off, I guess. <laughs> Voices, demands Lola. Irritated, Lainey reads in a deep voice, Fear not, milady. I'll save you from this great evil. Wonderful. How's my homework coming, Lise? asks Lola. Lisa, pulling, out, pulling up a sheet of paper that has the letters of the alphabet made up of different shaped pasta noodles. I'm up to the little letter S. Hmm, make the macaroni a little crooked. I don't want my teacher getting suspicious, says Lola. Chuckles and claps twice. Jester, how about a joke? Luann, dressed as a jester, unenthusiastically. Why do chicken coops... Only have two doors, because if they had four, they'd be chicken sedans. Ha 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 ha. Get it? asks Luann. Yes! Ha 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 ha. Isn't this fun, everyone? asks Lola. As Lola laughs at the fun she's having, her siblings all grumble in frustration, knowing they're not having fun. Lori and Lenny's room. The kids are having another meeting. I can't take another second of this. Do you know how hard it is to do a male voice? Very hard. Oh, yes, believe me. It's very, very hard and very impressive that I've managed to do a male voice for all the characters. <laughs> uh, read, read. Very hard, exclaimed Lainey. Steal down. Now I think we all know why we're here. Lola knows our secrets, and she's literally torturing us, says Lori. 
Clearly we've got a rat, says Lynn suspiciously. Ew, where? says Lenny, horrified, thinking Lynn is referring to a real rat. No, Lenny, a rat as in an informal term for a snitch, says Lisa. And her name rhymes with grano with granola, I say. Lisa? asks Lenny. No, Lenny, it's Lola, says Marie, holding up a bugged tiara. Note that Marie's name is bold here. She put this bugged tiara in, in your room and eavesdropped on our meeting. Flashback to yesterday. Lola growls loudly and tosses her tiara aside in, the, in fury. Mom, they won't let me in their secret, secrets club, yells Lola. As Lola was yelling at her mom, her tiara, tiara landed on the floor. God, I'm losing it. The camera zooms in on the tiara, revealing the microphone and flashback. Why that little, says Lainey. Calm down, Lainey. <laughs> says Furry. Well, now we know who the rat is, but what do we do about it? asks Lori. Yeah, she still has all our secrets. I'm glad you asked. I have a plan, I say, my name also in bold. I whispered the plan to everyone. <clears throat> the next morning, we put our plan into action. Lisa is sorting cereal bits for Lola in p the pink marshmallows in, in a bowl marked yes, while the regular bits go in another bowl marked yuck. Just ten more minutes, and I'll have all your cereal s cereals separated for you, Lola, says Lisa. Oh, good job, Lisa. Don't let any of that icky bran mix with those yummy marshmallows, says Lola, looking up at Luna playing a double bass. Uh, smooth jazz, Luna? <laughs> nice try. How about a little adult contemporary instead? Sure, anything for you, sis, says Luna, acting. She plays a different line. Luna is now painting Lola's toes. Almost done with the second coat, then under the third, says Lynn. Laney, story time, demands Lola. Excellent. I just I got just a story for you. That is no way a diversion. It starts with a princess and Laney gets cut off. Read it to me, read it to me, says Lola, excited. Laney starts reading. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a beautiful princess named Lola, and she was the most perfect princess in all the land. Lynn gives Lincoln and me the signal. Lincoln sneaks into Lana and Lola's room, and I sneak outside by flying out the window. Oh, yeah, real... Real low-key. Real, um, under-the-radar, whatever. Lincoln searches every nook and cranny until he finds a secret note under Lola's mattress. Aha! exclaims Lincoln, grabbing the note. If you're reading this, you must be snooping. Get out of my room, my room, or else. XOXO, Lola. If you're reading this, you must be snooping. Get out of my room, or else. Signed, Lola, says Lincoln. He disregards the warning and crumples up the note and finds another note in the waste basket. I said get out of my room. XOXO, XOXO, Lola. Lincoln, reading it. I said get out of my room. Signed, Lola. <sighs> Lincoln sees something on her nightstand. Lola's diary. Lincoln opens up a page. Today I broke Mom's most prized possession. Lincoln smiles, thinking he's got her. Just kidding. Only a moron would write secrets in a diary. Now get out of my room. XOXO, Lola. <sighs> Just kidding. Only a moron would write secrets in a diary. Now get out of my room. Signed, Lola. Reads Lincoln, closing the diary. Man, she's good. Lincoln grabs Lola's tiara. What is your secret, Lola loud? Lola, wait. Don't you want to hear the end? Says Lainey from downstairs. Lola, come back. Don't you want me to put more of that pink crud on your toenails? Asks Lynn from dis from downstairs, feigning concern. Lincoln gasps, knowing Lola is coming, and hides the bug tiara in his cap. Lola comes up to her room and gasp gasps in shock. Busted, says Lona. Says Lola, angry. She's actually scolding her teddy bear. I said no sweets before dinner, Mr. Sprinkles. Urgh, it's cold in here. She sees her window open while Lincoln is holding on by the sill and closes it on his fingers. Lincoln falls and screams and lands on a cactus. Youch, groans Lincoln. <laughs> Where the heck did this cactus come from? Lincoln sees another note attached to it. If you landed here, it means you were snooping in my room. Enjoy the prick enjoy the pricklies. XOXO, Lola. If you landed here, it means you enjoy you were snooping in my room. Enjoy the pricklies. Signed, Lola, says Lincoln, sighing in defeat. Miss Lisa's pageant training center. I'm talking with some of Lola's pageant rivals. Okay. Um. No one has dirt on Lola loud, I ask. Lola's competitors scream in fear upon hearing Lola's name and run away. Jump in Ger Geronimo, I exclaim. What did she do to these girls? Lindsay Sweetwater, question mark? Psst, over here. 
I turn around and see a pair of eyes sticking out of the, the closet door, N with no one looking. I approach the closet, and a pair of hands drag me in. The room is pitch black, and only the eyes are visible. Hey, I'm going to help you. Not because I like you, but because I'm tired of always coming in second place to Lola. Cool. What do you got? I ask. Lindsay whispers a secret to me, causing me to gasp loudly. Holy mother of dark chocolate? Thank you for telling me this. Oh, wait. Oh, wait till everyone hears this. Back at the Loud House, I reveal what Lindsay Sweetwater told me. Holy shamoly! exclaimed Luann. I just told Lincoln and all of his sisters Lola's secret, leaving them completely flabbergasted. Man, that is juicy, says Lynn off screen. The sisters look over at, over to Lynn, who was actually referring to the burger she's eating. And you got some really good dirt on Lola, too. Ha <laughs> ha, that was funny. The sisters all over their eyebrow the sisters all lower their eyebrows in annoyance, except for Luann, me, and Faree. <laughs> god. Of course. Yeah, because oh my god. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> my character, me and my, my, my lovely wife, we couldn't possibly be annoyed with somebody because being annoyed with somebody is a negative trait. And that would make me an evil, evil character. Okay, whatever. I love this. I love this. Luann snaps her fingers at her for telling such a good joke. Yep, and now it's time to take her down, says Lincoln. The sisters begin cheering. Lana and Lola's room. We confront Lola about the secret we learned. Holy shamoly, exclaims Lola after hearing the secret about her. All her siblings are surrounding her angrily. She grabs me by the shirt. Who told you about that? Lola looks at me, Marie, and her siblings, demanding an answer. We all shrug our shoulders, pretending not to know. If you tell Mom and, Mom and Dad our secrets, we'll tell them yours. Now, if you'll excuse us, those of us who can trust each other are going to go hang out, says Lincoln. The siblings, me and Marie, leave while Lola looks on with disappointment, realizing we got the upper hand. Lori and Lenny's room. The siblings are... We're back to telling secrets. So then, kaboom! Mom and Dad's bedspread was burnt to a crisp, says Lisa. Guys, I just saw Lola marching into Mom and Dad's room. I think she's ratting out, says Luann, barging into the room with a bowl of popcorn. The kids begin to chatter nervously. She wouldn't dare, says Lincoln. If she's taking us down, we're taking her down with us, says Lori. Let's get her, I say. I'm sorry, is that wrath I'm, I'm seeing from, from J.D.? Isn't that a negative trait? Oh, maybe I'm crazy. Of course, of course, maybe if it's directed at somebody who deserves it, right? Like a tattletale? Oh, they deserve death, if you ask me. I'm I'm getting off track. The siblings all rush downstairs and approach their parents' bedroom. Lola walks out with a, dis with a depressed expression. Thank you for telling the truth, sweetie. But you know I have to punish you. You're grounded for a month, says Rita. Rita pats Lola on the head and closes the door. Lola glumly walks away while the others look on dumbfounded. You're grounded? Wait, what's going on? asks Lincoln. Yeah, I don't understand, I say. Oh, you guys are off the hook. I took the blame for all the stuff you did, says Lola. The siblings gasp in shock. Even the scar? Yeah, how would she? I gave Laney a scar and I never told you. Now that would be awful. Uh, even the scar? asks Laney. No, but I did take the blame for the broken place, says Lola. Laney uh, sighs in relief. What? Why would you do that? asks Lincoln. Because oh, all I really wanted was to be included in your group, says Lola. Then why do you threaten to tell, tell on us and make us do all that stuff, asks Lincoln. It was only it was the only way I could get you to hang out with me. But then I realized I went out I went about it in the wrong way. Instead of using your secrets against you, I should have tried to earn your trust, uh, answers Lola, heading upstairs. So from now on, that's what I'm going to work on. Voice breaking? If anyone needs me, I'll be up in my room for the next 30 days. Care package is welcome. Lola sadly parts off as her siblings look on with sadness. You know, guys, I feel really bad for her. Maybe we should give her a chance, I say. In her room, Lola is playing a dirge on a harmonica. Oh, and is now wearing a denim prism uniform, uniform and a pink bandana with her hair now more curled. Lincoln knocks on the, her door and comes in. Hey, Lola, you know, we talked it over it and decided you're in. You've earned our trust. <gasps> oh, yes, 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 exclaims Lo uh, Lola, ripping off her uniform and revealing her normal outfit and starts dancing with joy. The club comes in to talk about their secrets with their new member. Oh, so you guys won't believe how bad I messed up the other day, says Lynn. Her siblings, her siblings is me and Faree's curiosity have peaked. I was in the living room practicing my pile driver with mom's ironing board. As Lynn talks about her secret, Lola is happy to hear every detail. Soon the meeting is over and the kids are all wrapping up as they head back to their rooms, while L Lana 
goes into the bathroom. Okay. Oh, you guys, that was so fun. Thanks, says Lola, waving goodbye. Everybody get home safe. Lola, asks Lainey. Lola turns to Lainey, who, walk, who walks up to her. It's important that you do not tell anyone about my scar. I'm very embarrassed about, about it, so please keep it to yourself. You don't have to worry about a thing, says Lola. From now on, all, all your secrets are safe with me. Lainey leaves, and Lola closes the door and starts talking to someone. So you'll never believe what Lynn did. It's revealed that she's whispering Lynn's secrets to her stuffed animals. She then looks at the viewers. Well, what did you expect? Asks Lola. I'm Lola Loud. It's not like it's not like they'll tell anyone, she says, turning to the stuffed animals. So anyway, she continues to tell Lynn's secrets. The end. Another fan fiction complete. Remember, folks, no one likes a tattletale. What happened to me with my pointer finger is all true. Oh, oh, I don't remember the exact time I slashed my finger, but it was before I moved to Castle Rock. I don't care. Oh, well, look at this. This is a uh, accidental good timing. Chapter 15, Tricked. Happy Halloween, everyone. Act 1. Me and Vivi are walking over to the Loud House. Hello, everyone. Today is none other than October 31st, a.k.a. Halloween, one of my favorite times of the year. Lucy has a special corn maze set up, and I have a feeling that this year's Halloween is going to be awesome. I have a tremendously scary surprise in store for it. I say to the viewers, Me too! We are going to have an awesome time, says Vivi to the viewers. The Loud House is covered in Halloween decorations as the entrance of the corn maze sits next to it. Off screen, a fridge door opens and a scream is heard as bats fly out of the house and towards the screen, darkening the picture. Zoom out to a close up of Lynn Sr. screaming in horror after seeing a fake severed head with fake blood in the fridge. <clears throat> I hate Halloween, says Lynn Sr. He exits right. A moment later, Lucy enters, walking towards the fridge and picking up the head. I love Halloween, says Lucy, smiling. Bleh, says the head. She exits. Dining room. In counterclockwise order, we see Luann fashioning a sign reading Haunted Court Maze and Red Stained Corn Cobs, Lenny hanging black curtains, Luna, Lincoln, Lana, Lola, and Lynn Jr. carving pumpkins, Lisa making flake, fake blood in a bucket, Lily um, playing with pumpkin innards, and Charles resting against a corn cob. We pan left as Lucy enters. Excellent fake blood, Lisa. Uh, add some molasses for better consistency, says Lucy. Hey, Luce, check out our pumpkins. What'd you think? asks Lynn. Each turns their jack-o'-lanterns around, showing each gruesome carved face. Hmm. Lucy points to a spot on Lynn's pumpkin. More blood here. Motions... Oh, ow. Motions around Lola's pumpkin. Few more gashes on this one. Fix out a tooth on Lana's pumpkin. Knock out a tooth. Points to the scabs on Lincoln's pumpkin. Add some more ooze to those scabs. Pats Lu Luna's pumpkin. Dampen the head wounds. Looks at Lainey's pumpkin, which has sewed eyes and mouth and has cuts all over it. Hmm. Sorry, Lucy. I'm not very good at making jack-o'-lanterns. I don't know, Lainey. Add some blood to the mouth and eyes, and I think we got some, says Lucy. Halloween's kind of kind of crazy with a spooky little girl like you, says Luna. Totes. I'm so glad Mom finally let you do your haunted corn maze, says Lenny. As am I. I've been waiting my whole life to do this, not to mention my past lives, says Lucy. Me and Marie, come in. Yeah! Ooh, they're here! Hey, guys, I say. <laughs> All the loud siblings say, Hi, J.D. Hi, Vuri. Hey, guys, says Vuri. You guys ready to have the greatest Halloween ever, I ask? Yes, uh, cheer all the loud siblings. Right on, I say. I walk over and check out their pumpkins. You guys made some really gruesome pumpkins, I say. Thanks, J.D., says Lincoln. I'm not very good at making jack lanterns says Lainey. Vuri looks at Lainey's pumpkins. Uh, pumpkin. Lainey, you did a really great job. You really think so, Vuri? asks Lainey. I know so, answers Vuri. Lucy walks off screen to Luann, who has just finished her sign. Fantastic work, uh, fantastic sign work, Luann. Just the right mixture of corn and gore, says Lucy. Oh shucks, it's <laughs> it's just something I cobbled together, uh, cobbled up together from a kernel of an idea, says Luann, dancing a little and laughing. Oh yes, a triple. Ha ha ha, that's funny, Luann, I say. Lucy and the others groan as a jack-o'-lantern is thrown into Luann's head. Luann... Through pumpkin. I'd expect more support from my pumpkin. Oh, yeah, like Ken. I get it. Laughs at the jack o' lantern. Laughs as the jack o' lantern's grin grew wider. Get it? She asks. Me and Vary laugh because they're awesome and I love them. Lucy face palms. Ah. <sighs> Turns to the others as the screen zooms out to show Lincoln. Thank thanks for all your hard work, guys. This is going to be the best Halloween ever. I'm so excited. Lucy, uh, her face shows a little change in the emotion. 
Trust me, says Lincoln to the audience, pointing to Lucy. She's excited. I know how you feel, Lucy. I just love Halloween, too, says Lainey. Really? Do you like the part where all the monsters come out of the darkness and scare people? Asks Lucy. That's cool, but I'm more into, into going out in costume and get lots of sweet, chocolatey, toothache-inducing candy, says Lainey. Drools. Lucy snaps her fingers and she snaps out of it. Great. Well, good luck with the maze, Lucy. I'm going to get ready for tonight. Lainey leaves. Hey, Lori, can we use the bathroom to change into our costumes? I ask. Go right ahead, you two, says Lori. Thank you, says Vri. Me and Vri go upstairs to change. Static is hurt. Jack O'Lincoln, do you copy? Asks Clyde off screen through a walkie-talkie. The static goes off again as Lincoln fishes out his walkie-talkie, turning away from Lucy. Speaking of the best Halloween ever, Clyde and I have some pretty big plans too, says Lincoln, putting his walkie-talkie up to his ear, to Clyde. I copy McBride of Frankenstein. Oh. Meet you at the rendezvous point in 15. Over. A thump is heard off screen. Ah, I hate Halloween, screams Lynn Sr. off screen. Oh. Everyone looks at Lucy. Dad must have found the severed limbs I stored in the closet. Time skip to later in <laughs> time skip to later in Laney's room. Laney was in the process of picking up out a costume while Cliff was resting on her bed. Okay, Cliff, I want your honest opinion. Which of my, which one of my costumes would be perfect? asks Laney. Laney comes out in a fairy princess costume. Cliff shakes his head. You're right. Too frilly, but my plant powers make me look like a magical fairy. Laney goes back inside closet and comes back out in a mummy costume cliff shakes his head again you're right such a such a waste of toilet paper well you already used it whatever laney goes back in okay how about this she asks off screen laney comes out in a witch costume holding a broom cliff comes up to her and purrs i knew you'd like it <laughs> loving it uh the sun changes from high up to to setting oh okay like to a setting sun Lisa checks the distance on her protractor. Eee! Eee! Seven minutes till sunset, says Lisa, getting into the rest of her kangaroo costume and hopping into the hallway. Siblings, assemble! It's almost time for the annual ritual of deception versus confection. Street name, trick-or-treating. Oh, great, funny. Oh boy, exclaims Lainey, leaving her room and sees Lisa in a kangaroo costume. Well, Lisa, you look cute in that kangaroo costume. That's the idea, dear sister, says Lisa. Enter the twins in their costumes. Lana is Abraham Lincoln, and Lola is the Statue of Liberty. Four score and seven pieces of candy ago, says Lana. Give me your tired, your poor, your delicious treats, yearning to be in my tummy, says Lola. This really, this is really great, great stuff. Hmm, patriotic, but unlikely to generate maximum candy confection, says Lisa. Wait a minute. I thought you two were going as salt and pepper shakers. We are, says Lola tearing off her Lady Liberty costume while Lana tears off her Honest Abe one, both revealing new costumes. We're also a mermaid and a pirate. <sighs> and salt and pepper shakers, says Lana. They tear off the sea costumes and reveal the seasoning ones. Isn't it easier to just wear to wear just one costume, asks Lainey. This way we can hit each house three times. That means three times the candy, says Lana. Yes, I'm familiar with basic multiplication. Your strategy is cute, but mine is far superior, says Lisa. Going as a kangaroo? <laughs> I doubt it, says Lana. Kangaroo plus baby roo. Lisa reveals Lily, who is dressed as her Joey and cooing. The twins gasp over the amazingly adorable sight. Precisely. That all factor will increase my candy revenue exponentially. And the best part is, she only has one tooth, so I don't have to share, says Lisa. Clever girl, says Lon Lainey. I think you all look really adorable, says Vari, off screen. Lainey, Lo Lainey, Lana, and Lola, Lisa, wait, why, why is it like that? Why is it Lainey, Lana, and Lola, Lisa, and Lily gasp seeing Vari? That's so annoying. Vari is in her mermaid form in a floating ball of water, and she has spines on her arms and back. Her hands are webbed and have claws. Her teeth are razor sharp, and her eyes are red like blood and slitted. <sighs> I come out with her dressed in my normal clothes. <laughs> Yes, because nothing's cooler than going as J.D. for Halloween. Wow, Vari, you look incredible, says Lainey. Thank you, Lainey, says Vari. Vari, me, uh, Vari is going as a dark side mermaid. Dark side mermaid? I can only assume that means, like, Star Wars the dark side, you know? <laughs>
Why don't we have any Jedi or Sith mermaids in the Star Wars uh, franchise? There's a dark side to the legend, asks Lola. Yes, Lola. The dark side has said that for centuries, people believed that mermaids were evil. Okay. Okay, my bad. You know, uh, uh, that's that's on me. That's on me. We're evil, bloodthirsty monsters that lured and drove sailors to their doom. We got the idea from when we were ma watching Pirates of the Carib Caribbean 4 on Stranger Tide, says Vuri. Whoa, we saw that movie and those mermaids were scary, says Lana. I must say, Vuri, you really do personify the dark side of the mermaid perfectly, says Lisa. Thank you, Lisa, says Vuri. But J.D., where's your costume, asks Lola. I have a special surprise in store for, Lu for Lucy's corn maze, I say. Lincoln, Clyde, get your butts o out here, says Lola. The boys open the door and reveal to be dressed as British masters? British masters. I thought you guys were going as Ace Savvy and One-Eyed Jack. Uh, we are. We're Ace and Jack undercover, trying to crack the case of the missing crumpets, says Lincoln. Boy, you guys really don't want candy, do you? asks Lisa. Yeah, you're right. We probably won't get much this year, says Lincoln. The two snicker slyly. Is it just me, or are those boys up to something? asks Laney. It's not just you, Laney. Ooh, my God! Eh, it's probably nothing, says Lola. All right, let's get some candy. Has anyone seen Dad? asks Lana. They hear someone whimpering off in the distance. Lola groans and barges into the bathroom. Everything's scary. I don't know why everything's scary, whimpers Lynn Sr. Lola opens the shower curtain and finds him in the bathroom. Are you okay, Mr. Lynn? I ask. I'm so scared of Halloween, says, uh, says Lynn Sr. He gets really scared on, Hall uh, on Halloween, J.D., says Lana. Is that is that what he said? Is that what he just said, and you didn't have to say that. Because when Lynn Sr. says, I'm so scared of Halloween, we don't need Lana to say, he gets really scared on Halloween, J.D. I'm sorry. I sh okay. <clears throat> Every Halloween is the same thing, says Lisa. It's all right, Mr. Lynn. There's nothing to be afraid of. It's just people dressed in costumes, says Marie. I'm too scared, says Lynn Sr. Let's go, father. Chop, chop. These candy bags won't fill themselves. Though, I am working on a prototype which will do exactly that, says Lisa. Uh, sorry, kids, I can't go. I think I have the flu, or the plague, or a charley horse, says Lynn, nervously. Ugh, we go through this every year, says Lola, exasperated. All right, grab a limb, says Laney. The twins and Laney grab him as Lisa hops off. I don't want to go. <laughs> I don't want to. Uh, screams Lynn Sr. reluctantly, getting dragged off. Your dad's going get doing better this year, says Clyde to Lincoln. <laughs> That's funny. They follow. They follow. Outside, the kids start chanting candy while Lynn Sr. is terrified of going out. Lincoln and Clyde fist bump and pre prepare to break away from the group. Hey, where are you two going? asks Lola, suspicious. Nowhere. We uh, just decided to go through the neighborhood counterclockwise this year, says Lincoln. Me, he and Clyde nervously grin. Seems like an odd, pointless choice. Much like your costumes, says Lisa. Burn. I'm telling you, those two are up to something, says Laney. Have fun, boys, says Lynn Sr., seeing something on his shirt and freaks out. Ah, a spider web. It's a loose thread on your shirt, says Lola, plucking it off. <clears throat> well, I guess I can't trick or treat if my shirt's falling apart, right? Asks Lynn Sr. Nice try, says Lola, not buying it, grabbing, grabbing and dragging him as he yelps. Want me to hold your hand, Dad? Asks Laney. Yes, please. Lady, you're so perfect. You're so, so perfect. Yes, please, <clears throat> answers Lynn Sr. Laney holds his hand. Later that night, Mevery, Laney, and her younger sisters, accompanied by petrified by their petrified dad, began their trick-or-treating route, with, with Laney being the most excited about it, especially the part where people give out candy. Wow, look at all the people in their costumes. There's a psycho killer, a Frankenstein, ooh, and a werewolf. These are all actually kind of basic. Says Laney. Boy, everybody looks great in costumes, I say. You know, Laney, I'm surprised you're not as scared of Halloween as Dad, says Lola. That's because they're not real monsters, just people in costumes. Believe me, nothing scares me. Enter Joey Anderson in a Dr. Jekyll slash Mr. Hyde costume. Hello, Laney. <laughs> God, I hate my life, says Joey in a British accent. Ah, screams Laney, hiding behind Lynn Sr. Almost nothing, says Lana. Relax, Lainey, it's just a costume, says Joey. Uh, yeah, I know that. <laughs> so, uh, what are you guys doing here? Asks Lainey, nervous. Same as you, trick-or-treating, says Joey. Looks at Varie. Miss Varie, you look as you look amazing as a mermaid. She, uh, 
funny <laughs> funny thing is she is a mermaid thank you joey says Marie. she's going as a mermaid from the dark side of the legend you look great as dr jekyll and mr hyde joey one of my favorite stories says i say truly amazing and thank you jd <laughs> thank you jd where's your costume i ask uh, asks joey i'm losing it I have a special surprise saved up for Lucy's corn maze at the Loud House. It will scare you to death, I say. God, I can't wait. I can't wait to see it, <laughs> says Joey. Looking, Joey looks at the twins' costumes. And what adorable costumes you have. Thank you, say Lola and Lala. Care to join us? Asks Lainey. We're about to hit the next house. Sure. I could always go for more candy in my bag, says Joey. Ha! I doubt you could get more candy than us, says Lola. What do you mean? asks Joey. We have a system, says Lana. Watch and learn, says Lola. The twins go up to the first house with their patriotic costumes and knock on as the doors open. Trick or treat, say Lola and Lana. Deem Doan. Or is it DM Doan? I'm going to do, I'm going to do DM Doan. Uh, oh, aren't you too adorable, says DM Doan, giving them their candy. As the, as the door closes, there's another knock with the twins now in their aquatic outfits. Trick or treat, say Lola and Lana again. So cute, says DM Doan, easily fooled and giving them more candy. Another to another knock, and the twins are in their condiment costumes. Trick or treat, say Lona and Lana. Great costume, says DM Doan, still believing, gives them more candy. Who is DM Doan? DM Doan, whatever. Thank you, say Lona and Lana, leaving. And that is how it's done. One house, six pieces of candy. One each? That's awful, man. And that is how it's done. One house, six pieces of candy. Six? One each? That sucks. Says Lana. Me and Vareek come back and our pillowcases are full of candy. Great job, you two, I say. And that is how it's done. One house. They're saying it again. One house, six pieces of candy, says Lana. The twins high five. Impressive, says Joey. You should see how Lisa does it, says Lainey. Does she wear three costumes at once, too? Asks Joey. Nope. She has an in ingenious tactic, I say. Lisa hops up to the door and knocks as it opens. Trick or treat, says Lisa. <laughs> DM Doan, uh, how sweet, a kangaroo, says DM Doan, preparing to give her her candy. And a baby roo, says Lisa. Lisa pops out of, uh, Lily pops out of Lisa's pouch and coos. Aww, says DM Doan, overcome by adorableness, gives Lisa every piece in her bowl. Thank you, says Lisa, hopping away contently to the twins. Ha! One house, 87 pieces of candy. Well, Lenny, your sisters are very clever, says Joey. Thanks, but if you ask me, I like doing it the old-fashioned way, says Lenny, walking up to the door and knock, knocks on it. DM Doan opens it. I didn't see that coming. Trick or treat, says uh, Lenny. I love your little witch costume, says DM Doan, but I'm afraid I'm all out of candy. That cute little kangaroo got every last one. DM Doan closes the door. Aw, says Lenny, walking back downtrodden. No worries, Lenny. The night is still young. There are plenty of houses... There are plenty more houses to go, says Lola. Here, Lenny, you can have some of mine, I say. Oh, very generous. I give her half of the candy in my pillowcase. Okay, not even my best friends would get half of my Halloween candy. Uh, full of candy, and it, and it had full-size candy bars and some mini candy bars. Oh, my fucking God. Wow, thanks, JD. You're a true friend, says Lenny. Let us show you how. Uh, let us show you where we got all this. I say. We walk to a house three doors down, with the door open, and we go inside, and there's a giant cauldron filled with candy to the brim with a sign on it that's that is, on it that said, "Help yourselves." Behold, says Vary. Jackpot, says Lainey. Lainey, Joey, Lana, Lo and Lola, and Lisa fill their pillowcases. Well, what's the point of trick or treating then? We come outside five minutes later and go to Lynn Senior. Well, you guys hit the mother load, says Lynn Senior. There's a treasure trove of candy in that house over there, Daddy. Oh, I don't like having to say Daddy. <laughs> Points to the house with the open door. The wind blows eerily behind Lynn Senior. A ghost just touched me, screams Lynn Senior, fainting. D oh, Daddy, wake up, says Lola, shaking his face. Never fear, siblings. I have prepared for this eventuality, says Lisa. Pull pulls in a wagon. We drag Lynn Senior on the wagon for the rest of the hunt. Is your dad always like this? Asks Joey. He is always scared of Halloween, uh, responds Lainey. I, s <laughs> I sense something. <laughs> Uh-oh, I sense a disturbance in the forest, I say. What's wrong, JD? Asks Lainey, without a question mark. I, uh, <laughs> I see two familiar faces. 
It's a hawk and Hank of Hazel Tucky High School. <gasps> it's Hawk and Hank, and they're here to destroy our Halloween. Come on, let's head back to the Loud House. We run back to the Loud House and made it back safely. We had our candy in the basement. Nick and Clyde run off in their direction. On the intersection of Franklin and Olive, kids are out trick-or-treating as Nick and Clyde arrive, but they hear Hank and Hawk uh, laughing <laughs> and hide in the bush. Franklin Avenue, ha, score, exclaims Hank. He and Hawk put on disturbing baby masks, laugh, and head down Lincoln Street. The boys pop out as soon as they leave. Boy, those baby masks sure are creepy, says Clyde, terrified. Yeah, but little do they know where the real score is, right, buddy? Asks Lincoln. I can't wait to tell Dr. Lopez about this. But should I tell her in group or wait for our one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, is Clyde in therapy? Definitely group. You might inspire somebody. Uh, responds Lincoln. They head off to the manor. A flock of bats transitions back to the loud house where Lucy steps out and turns on the lights for her corn maze and carries in a bucket of fake blood. <clears throat> okay, everyone, places, says Lucy into a megaphone. Love your Grim Reaper costume, Lucy, I say. Thanks, JD, says Lucy. You see, that was a joke opportunity. To, to have, like, Lucy go costume and imply that Lucy, this, this is just something Lucy wears. Whatever. <laughs> Rita steps out, looking like a zombie, moaning and groaning. How's that? <laughs> How's that? So asks Rita. Hmm, not quite there. I think we need to lose a limb, says Lucy, taking out a chainsaw. No, Lucy, no! Uh, yells Rita, panicking and flinching. Lynn comes out, looking like a masked serial killer. Here, Lynn, don't forget your chainsaw, says, Lu uh, says Lucy. Tear some heads off, Lynn, I say. <laughs> Lynn takes it and runs into the maze. Ah! <sighs> Sighs Rita, relieved. A little homemade blood and you're good to go, says Lucy, pulling her mom's shirt sleeve up to cover up her arm and rubs the blood on the on the sleeve. You're a real pro, honey. I should have let you do this years ago. I should have let you do the Yeah, says Rita. Thanks, Mom. I'm just glad to finally get my chance, says Lucy. I'm so thrilled I can barely contain myself. Once again, her face hardly shows any change. All right, I should probably be reading that appropriately then. I know, honey. I can see it all over your face, says Rita. You look great as a zombie, Miss Rita, I say. Thank you, J.D., says Rita. Enter Lori, dressed as a vamp vampiress. A vampire? Vampire isn't masculine. It's not like you don't do actor and actress like you do vampire and vampiress. At least I don't think so. Whatever. Whatever. Just <laughs> read. I literally want to suck your blood, says Lori in Transylvanian accent. Flips her hair uh, and is stopped by Lucy. Count Countess Loricula, you can suck my blood any time? Oh, dude, that is not... <laughs> is that game? Is that game? Uh, I say in a Transylvanian accent, Lori and me laugh malevol malevolently. <laughs> me and Lori hiss at each other. Me and Lori then laugh in our normal voices. What the hell is going on? Lori, you look amazing and truly terrifying as a vampirist. Bobby would love you look would love you look like this. Bobby would love you look like Okay, good. I'm not having a heart attack. Just bad grammar. Thank you. Thank you, JD, says Lori. Miss Rita, can you take a picture of me and Lori? I want to make some pictures for Bobby. You want to make pictures for Bobby. You I mean, there is like an extent to how how thoughtful people can be, and typically taking the initiative to make pictures for somebody else's boyfriend is not awful, but I gotta say, it's a little weird. Sure, says Rita. Back to the reading, back to the reading. I hand Miss Rita my phone, and she takes three uh, photos of me and Loy. One was us smiling, the second was us hissing, and the final was us looking at each other with menacing faces. Perfect, says Rita. Thanks, Miss Rita. <clears throat> I say. Hmm, missing something, says Lucy. Fangs here, she says into the megaphone. Fangs flies in and perches on Lori's shoulder, making her scream. If you want to make it more authentic, he could bite your neck, says Lucy. No, I mean, this is fine, says Lori, objectively. I have a better idea. I dip two fingers in some fake blood. Here, Lori, I say. Oh, I get it. Lori shows her neck, and I dab fake blood 
onto her neck and make mark bite, uh, bite marks. <laughs> mark bites. There, now you look like a real vampire. I say. Thanks, J.D., says Lloyd, going into the maze. Enter Luann and Dr. Frankenstein, with Mr. Coconuts as her Frankenstein monster, as Luann laughs evilly. I love your mad scientist costume, Luann. You look insanely sci scientifical. I, I say, rimshot. Ha 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 ha. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, J.D. Luann, uh, why did the skeleton go to the library? Why, asks Luann, to bone up on a few things. To bone up on a... Th to bone up on a few things. To bone up... Read up? Is uh, is that it? Because I know, like, there's a term, read up on something, I think. Is, is you... That's not a joke. Me and Luann laughed. <laughs> I'm glad you think it is. Hang on, Luann. Your monster needs more stitches, says Lucy, drawing some on Mr. Coconuts. That's, that's so, that's so much better. Ha ha ha, get it? Uh, asks Luann. Ha ha ha, good one, I say. No puns in the maze, says Lucy. A disappointed Luann goes in. Enter Lenny, dressed as, as Marie Antoinette, with her head missing. She trips over the stairs since she can't see where she's going. Looks great, Lenny, but don't forget this, says Lucy, taking out, taking out the head that was in the fridge earlier. Lenny pops her head out, gasps for la from lack of air, and sees the head. Why do I have to look so pale? You've just been decapitated, says Lucy. Well, I'd still like to put I'd still put on some blush, says Lenny. You look great as Marie Antoinette, Lenny, a very famous French historical figure. Really is perfect for this. What a base basic knowledge. Oh, whatever. Me. Uh, I say. Thank you. Thank you, JD, says Lenny. Make a lot, make a lot of heads roll, Lenny. Rim shot, I say. Uh, <laughs> laughs from in the maze. Good one, JD, says Luann. Thanks, Luann. I say. Gia rolls in, and Lucy puts the head on the hamster ball. Lenny takes a deep breath and hides her head as she, as she and Gio go into the maze. Out come a pipe organ and Lu Luna dressed like a skeleton. Ready to rock, oh, mistress of the dark. Oh, oh, I see. Ready to rock, oh, mistress of the dark, says Luna. Starts playing let's make this i hold a flashlight under my face for a more dramatic and horrific effect <laughs> a halloween to remember mahaha <laughs> demonic laughter diabolical voice i'm not doing that great diabolical laugh uh jd and luna drop oh great diabolical laugh jd and luna drop down an octave and try it in d minor that's the spookiest key says lucy luna plays it as such, and Lucy bursts out her megaphone. Busts out her megaphone. My bad. Okay, guys, the Loud Family Haunted Corn Maze is officially open. Let's bring on the screams, people, says Lucy, picking up her hood, scythe, and blood, and creeps into the maze. Me, Marie, and Lainey are going to find Lincoln and Clyde, I say. Huntington Manor's gate, Lincoln and Clyde come walking by in their disguises. Fancy visiting a few flats and loading up upon some proper suites. <laughs> says Clyde in a British accent. Oh, they do this a lot. Lincoln looks at him confused, in a normal voice. Didn't you read the British study guide I sent you? Sorry, I only got through the first ten pages, says Lincoln, taking out the guide. They walk up the gate, and Wyatt notices them. Wyatt tips his hat. Master Nigel, Master Alistair, I thought you were in England, he says, opening the gate. We go all the way over here, and then realize we forgot to feed Nigel's fish. God, I'm having much... I'm having a bad day. I'm having a bad, bad day, says Lincoln in a British accent. So we flew back straight away, and Bob's your uncle? Well, ta-ta. <laughs> Everything's tippity-tippity-boo, or something. So we flew back straight away, and Bob's your uncle? Well, ta-ta, says Clyde in a British accent. Not so fast, boys, says Wyatt, suspicious. Lincoln and Clyde stop and think they, they're they busted. Next time, call me, call me, and I can feed your fish. Fish, says Wyatt, handing Clyde a card. Thanks. Well, shredded wheat, old boy? Well, shredded, shredded wheat, old boy, says Lincoln in a British accent. Oh, my God. It's Cheerio, says Clyde in a, quietly in, the, in his normal voice. Oh, yeah, okay. Jokes. Funny jokes. They run into the neighborhood and take off their master costumes to reveal their hero costumes. We're done with the tricks. Now for the treats, says Lincoln. They fist bump. Meanwhile, Lincoln and Clyde are walking down the street with their sacks loaded. What a haul! 
Maybe we should take it to our to your house because my sisters will pounce on it, says Lincoln. Well, if we take it to my house, my dad's will lock it up and only let me have three one ounces a week, says Clyde. Hmm, we need to plan C. They bury, they bury it underground. Bat transition to the intersection of Franklin and Alvin as they arrive. Our hard work paid off, Clyde. Best Halloween ever, says Lincoln. Three, Laney and Joey arrive. Oh, me, Vere, Laney, and Joey arrive. Lincoln, Clyde, thank goodness we found you. The corn maze is starting, I say. Thank you for telling us, guys. Let's go. We high, f <laughs> we high five and turn the corner and find, to their shock, that the jack-o'-lanterns are smashed. Toilet paper is in the trees. Candy wrappers are all over the ground, and all the Franklin Avenue and all of Franklin Avenue is a complete mess. Well, maybe not everyone, says Lincoln, shocked. What happened? What happened here? Asks Vere. End of Act One. Act 2, brackets 1, edit. I don't know what that means. The girls are closing up the maze. Guys, what's going on? Asks Lincoln. Why are the streets des deserted? And why are you taking down the maze? Nobody showed up. All my work for nothing. Not a single scream. Uh, says Lucy. Nobody showed up? Why not? Asks Clyde. Because two big stinkers came along and ruined everything. Says Lola. Yeah, they TP'd all the trees and smashed all the jack-o'-lanterns. And the worst... Of it all, in the worst of all, they stole everybody's everybody else's candy," says Lola. Lincoln and Clyde huddle up. Two big stinkers. You don't think it was the guys we told to come here, do you? When did that happen? Asks Clyde. No way, Clyde. There's plenty of big stinkers in our neighborhood," says Lincoln. True," says Clyde. I'll never shake the I'll never shake the sound with their big dumb laughs. I'll never shake the sound of their big dumb laughs says Lana, anguished. Wait, didn't those guys didn't those guys have dumb big dumb laughs? asks Clyde. Clyde, plenty of people have big dumb laughs, responds Lincoln. True, says Clyde. And I'll never forget those creepy baby faced masks, says Lola, vengeful. Wait, didn't those guys Clyde gets cut off. Okay, Clyde, it was them, says Lincoln. Ugh, all Hollow's Eve, street name Halloween's clearly Oh, is clearly ruined. The other girls go back inside, get uh, greatly upset of what happened. Lily crawls by, sighing with despair. This is all our fault, Clyde. We let those stinkers right to my street, says Lincoln, riddled with guilt. We ruined Halloween, say Lincoln and Clyde together. We didn't. Why did Dr. Lopez tell me the pitfalls of looking out for me, asks Clyde. We gotta fix this, Clyde, says Lincoln. I'm with you, but how, asks Clyde. <laughs> This time, Hawk and Hank have gone too far. Luckily, they didn't take all of, all of our candy. We hit it good. Come on, everyone, let's get them, I say. Me, Free, Lincoln, Laney, and Clyde, now got now out of our costumes, are walking the streets. But you haven't put on your costume. J.D. hasn't put on his costume, has he? Did I somehow skip that? First, we gotta find those guys, but it won't be easy. We don't even know where to start looking, says Lincoln. How about that trail of candy wrappers? says Clyde, noticing something. That that should that should work. That should work, says Lincoln, seeing the seeing said trail. We follow the trail until a gust of wind blows the wrappers away. No, our trail exclaims Lincoln. What are we gonna do now? asks Clyde, shaking Lincoln vigor vigorously. Some familiar laughter goes off. <gasps> the big dumb laughs, Lincoln and Clyde says Lincoln and Clyde together. I've got an idea, I say. I call Lucy on my phone. You rang Asks Lucy, answering. Once again, this is bold. Lucy, how would you like to have your haunted maze after all? I ask. Lucy emerges from her coffin and gives off a slight smile. We arrive at, ha at Hawk and Hank's treehouse. I walk up to the base of the tree and deliver a powerful chop that slices through it and it falls. You know, honestly, it's been quite a while since we've seen a new, a new power from from jd here then again i think he already said that he was like a kung fu master who knows timber i yell the tree crashes to the ground hawk and hank get up out of the rubble our tree house exclaims hank hello jerks i say hawk and hank look at me and see me cracking my knuckles jd what are you doing here asks hank i'm here to kick your butts all the way to the moon i say you think you can beat us asks hawk <laughs> we won't know until i try I say, let's get him, says Hawk. They leap out of the treehouse rubble and charge at me, and I punch Hawk in the face and kick Hank in the stomach and punch him in the mouth and kick Hank in the nose. I mean, Hawk in the nose. 
Hawk and Hawk went down, and Meavery Laney and the boys run. Let's go, I say. Those guys are dead, says Hawk. <laughs> J.D., you're so cool. We climb over the log, but the stinkers plow right through it. We hop over stones on the lake, but the stinkers charge on top of the water. We cross another log, acting as a bridge, and when the stinkers try, the combined weight breaks the bridge, making them fall, scream, and climb up, climb up with their bare hands. Soon they arrive back in the town. Ugh, stomach cramps, says Hawk, stopping in pain. Oh man, if you get a cramp, I'll get a cramp, says Hank. What's wrong, butt faces, I taunt. Can't run as fast as your stomachs can carry you? Uh, what? The stinkers growled at me. You are dead, says Hawk. Catch us if you can, losers, taunts Vary. Go, yells Lincoln. The chase resumes all the way to the corn maze, with the stinkers getting ready to pummel us as we rush in. They're ours now, says Hank. Lincoln and Clyde duck into a few corn plants and lose them. It worked. We got them in here, says Clyde. The stinkers are still looking. It's really dark in here, says Hawk, a little scared. Oh, God. Oh, God. I see what's coming. Man up, bro. I want that candy, says Hot Hank. Laney was in the corn maze, watching the stinkers. All right, stinkers. Let's see what scares you. The lights turn off. What's that? asks Hank. Luna is playing on her organ. <laughs> is this a real thing? Oh my god. Luna sings when darkness falls on the house of loud. Around every corner, new terror abounds. You don't want to lose your head. Ha ha ha. Uh, you can run, but you can't hide. This is awful. They know that you taste better alive. I don't think that they've been fed in a long, long time. Every corner of a floor, watch out. They ain't herbivores. Ghastly ghouls, out for blood. Sorry, bud. You got tricked. You got tricked. You got punked and pranked with a spooky twist. Before you wet your pants, better get out quick. This is really bad. Is this like the original? Is this from the original uh, episode? Tricked, tricked, tricked. You got tricked. Beware of fangs and bloody fur. Allow her strange all massacre. There's no chance that you'll get out. Ghost writing your eulogy. Heads are rolling literally. So who who needs their mommy now? Spilling guts on the floor. Clean up on aisle four. Why 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 are you running off so soon? Sorry, dude. You got tricked. You got tricked. You got punked and pranked and with a spooky twist. Before you wet your pants, better get out quick. Tricked, tricked, tricked. You got tricked. That was great. Can't, can't wait. Can't wait for more like that. During the montage, the Loud Sisters scare the stinkers with everything they throw at them. Luann brings Mr. Coconuts to life. Lisa and Lily act rabid. Lori acts like she's been feasting on Rita. <clears throat> uh, Lynn turns on her chainsaw. Lola appears like a corpse. Lana acts as her ghost. Lenny walks around blindly under her dress while with Gio rolling his ball with the fake head still on. Lenny was stirring a monster-filled pot and cackled like a real witch. Okay. Vivi was in her dark side mermaid form, and she terrified the stinkers by snarling and hissing and spraying the stinkers with water that smelled really horrible. I guess that's just what she does. I unveiled my surprise. I had my eyes covered by by my hair, and I start to change. Oh, God. Wait, wait. I had my eyes covered by my hair, and I start to change. I become hideously gruesome and horrifically monstrous monstrosity, loaded with blood, guts, body parts, tentacles, and, mo and more. I was a fusion of every single horrific monster from the movie The Thing. Okay. The monsters were from... What? The monsters were from the 1982 and 2011 movies and the two 2002 video game. Lightning flashed behind the monstrosity and flames from the netherworld flickered around it and it scared the stinker so bad that it made them soil their pants three times. Okay, and everything else in the maze terrifies them to the point where the sounds of their screams catches the attention of the other kids on the block, and their screams also catch the attention of a nearby police car, and the sneakers run into Lucy who is blocking the exit. <clears throat> the crimes you've committed this night shan't go unpunished. You reap what you sow, says Lucy. She slashes the rope with her, slight, with her scythe, dumping a bucket of fake blood on them, making them scream. Blood, screams Hank. I'm gonna puke, screams Hawk. If you're gonna puke, I'm gonna puke, screams Hank. A tentacle, a tentacle with a scary flesh flower covered in blood and slime appears in front of their faces, and tentacles 
come out and snap their faces, and the sneakers vomited all over the ground. What? God, what is it with this guy and vomiting? As they run out screaming, Lucy gives a small smile of satisfaction. We're not coming back here again, says Hank, nauseous. He and the hawk run off, and a police car drives up, and the officers come out. You got tricked, says Luna, finishing her song. You two are under arrest, says Officer Stacy. Who? Everyone cheers with from a successful maze scare. That was awesome, says Lana. That was so awesome, says Lenny. Thanks, guys. I think we taught those two big stinkers a lesson. No. Thank you and JD for bringing them here, says Lucy. You totally made my Halloween. I've never been happier. Once again, little to no change of emotion on her. Clyde examines it. Trust me, she's happy, says Lincoln. We see the officer slaps we see the officers slap the handcuffs on Hawk and Hank. Nice gun maze you guys got here, says Officer Stacy. Thanks, Officer Stacy, I say. Officer, uh, we saw the whole thing. Great job, guys, says Officer Paul. Thanks, officers, says Rita. These butt faces had it coming. They ruined, ruined everyone's Halloween by TPing the trees, destroying our pumpkins, and stealing our candy, I say. Is that right? Wait, so you arrested them without knowing that yet? You can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. I'm so... <sighs> Is that right? Asks Officer Stacy to Hawk and Hank. Well, you two are in for some hard time. Hard time? What, for being bullies? I mean, yeah, sure, punish them, but you make it sound like they're going to go to jail, which, knowing JD, is not out of the question. How about five to ten in the pokey? The pokey? What's a pokey, I ask. We all laugh. Great corn maze, guys. Let's go, you two, uh, says Officer Paul. Anything, get us out of here, exclaims Hawk. Happy Halloween, everyone, says Officer Stacy. Happy Halloween, Happy Halloween, officers, I say. They drive off. They can, uh, JD, your surprise. Oh, JD, your surprise was awesome, says J uh, Lincoln. Three in the louds cheered wildly. Thanks, guys. I have shape-shifting powers. Okay. That's, the, okay, there we go. New one. Add that to the list. I wanted to do something really special tonight. <sighs> Who was all that? That you turned into, asks Clyde. It was a fusion of every single gruesome monster from my favorite science science fiction horror movie, The Thing. This movie was oh, he's telling it again. This movie was made in 1982 and in 2011. It's about an extraterrestrial shape shifting alien organism that can imitate life forms perfectly, and it terrorizes two camps down in Antarctica and kills a lot of people. I decided to do a scary transformation where I become all the monsters in both the movies and the video game all in one which honestly wouldn't really look all that more horrifying than just one The Thing monster. They're all equally horrifying, I'd say. Adding them doesn't really do much. Okay, this was truly an awesome, that was truly an awesome transformation, JD, says Lainey. Thanks, Lainey, I say. Hopefully next year your, your maze will have more than two customers, Lucy, says Lincoln. Looks like we won't have to wait till next year, says Rita, noticing something. Every kid in the neighborhood showed up. Places, everyone, says Lucy on, on a megaphone. The girls go back in the maze. Joey runs in with the other kids. Laney, yells Joey. Joey, yells Laney. I saw everything. Whatever's in that maze really scared those blokes straight. Blokes? Is he? I'm not saying it. So, uh, says Joey. Yep. And you can thank these guys for making all this come back from the dead. JD, that transformation of yours really was smashing, says Joey. Thanks, Joey. Those two had it coming, I say. And thanks, Lainey. But too bad nobody got any candy, says Lincoln. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Asks Clyde. Let's go get our shovels, responds Lincoln. Lincoln, me, Marie, and Clyde are going, are giving out the full-sized bars Lincoln and Clyde got to the kids who had their candy stolen. Trick or treat, says a, ball says a ballerina girl. Lincoln gives her one. Here you go, says Clyde. Lovely ballerina costume, I say. <laughs> you just have to. You just have to. Have to, have to, have to. Every time, small, minuscule character doesn't serve any purpose. But you have to prove that you're such a great guy that you even think, uh, uh, compliment people. Oh my God! Thank you, responds the ballerina girl. Trick or treat, says a Harry Potter boy. Hey, and here you go, says Lincoln, giving him one. Great Harry Potter costume, says Marie. Thanks, says Harry Potter boy. 
Chick Ortry says a robot kid in a fox metallic voice. Lincoln gives him one, and the younger sisters are next. Lola, Lana, Laney, and Lisa. Trick or treat, Lincoln gives each of them one. Ooh, says Lola. Full-size candy bars? No way, says Lana. Wow, where did you guys acquire these magnificent specimens? Says Lisa. It's a long story. Let's just say next Halloween, we have a great place to take you guys trick-or-treating, says Lincoln. You'll need, you'll just need a British accent, says Clyde. Mmm, so good, says Lainey, biting into her chocolate bar. The scissors run off, and a boy as a mummy comes up next. Why are we, why are we doing this? Like, no, I know they're doing it for the story, but why are we going through each of these? Why is it so long? Okay. Um, Trick or treat, says Mummy Boy. Lincoln gives him one. Great mummy costume, says Marie. Thank you, says Mummy Boy. Lona and Lana come back in their salt and pepper shaker costumes. Trick or treat, says Lona and Lana together. Nice try, says Lincoln. Too smart for the trick. Good try, you two, I say. The twins walk away, foiled. A girl dressed as a hot dog is the last one. Oh, thank God. Trick or treat, says hot dog girl. Girl, girl. Lincoln gives her one. Great hot dog costume, I say. Thank you, says hot dog girl. That's everybody, says Clyde. Great. And the rest of the candy bars are all ours, says Lincoln. Well, uh, Clyde reaches in and pulls out a single fun size bar. There's actually just one. Eh, that's all right. Giving them out was just as fun as getting them. Splitsies? asks Lincoln. Sure, says Clyde. They split the bar and take their, and take their halves. Thanks, Jack O'Lincoln. Happy Halloween, says Clyde. Happy Halloween, McBride of Frankenstein. This has be truly been the best Halloween ever. But the best part was I got to share it with Varie and my best friends, I say. Lincoln, Varie, Lainey, Lola, Lana, and Lisa, and Clyde all hug me. Happy Halloween, everyone, I say. Varie and the loud kids all say, Happy Halloween, J.D. And then they all say, ah, Thank you, J.D. Lynn Sr. finally comes to and wakes up. Well, thank goodness it's over, says Lynn Sr., relieved. He hears a thump and screams. What was that? Sees the Marie head, still rolled by Geo underneath hitting the wagon, and screams one last time, I hate Halloween! Hawk and Hank are both found guilty of vandalism and grand theft candy. They're, what? They were sentenced to three years in Detroit Juvenile Correctional Facility and 15 hours of community service. Eight hours a day equals 187 days and 12 hours. Thank you for telling me that. The end. You're kidding. You're kidding. Three years. Maybe if they would like, I don't know, drove a kid to suicide or, or, or even just beat up a kid but all that really happened was they were bullies and then they got attacked and then they got scared and then they got arrested without knowing that without the, the police officers knowing what they were arresting them for this is stupid another fan fiction complete i know it's late for halloween actually in my case it's early but i wanted to make a special version of it i watched the movie the thing from 1982 and 2011, and they both scared the living daylights out of me. I played the video games from 2002, and it scared me just as bad. Uh, I didn't complete it, though. I got scared the worst from both movies. But as I watched them over and over, I realized that it's not... It's not real? Plus, I wanted to make the Loud House Halloween very special by adding elements from both movies and the video game of the thing. You had to watch both movies multiple times before you realized it's not real whatever i hope you guys like it and have a good night the thing uh the thing of 1982 and 2011 belong to universal pictures john carpenter Eric Eisner, david foster the video game belongs to vivendi universal games konami microsoft sony and black label games pirates of the caribbean for on stranger tides is owned by disney studios jesus christ 16 power of the wind mm -mm. The nuts in the state, daytime. Me, Varee, Lincoln, and Laney are sitting on the sofa in my couch. Me and Lincoln are playing video games, and Varee and Laney are reading books. Laney suddenly got a strange thought. Hey guys, I've been thinking, says Laney. I pause the game. What's up, Laney? I ask. Well, I got my plant powers from the Diamond of Gaia, <laughs> and, I, and I have a very strong feeling that other diamonds like that are out there. I'm beginning to wonder that it would, what it would be like if my entire family was given superpowers. Uh, responds Laney. That is a big thought, and I have and I have a very strong feeling that you're right, Laney, says Varee. That is a possibility, and that would be very cool, says Lincoln. Eleven PM Lloyd was um Lloyd was waiting to fall asleep in her bedroom, and a nasty windstorm was going on outside. The winds were blowing at forty five miles per hour, when suddenly something smashed through her bedroom window. 
Lynn Sr., Rita, and Lloyd's siblings came in, and they saw Leah in a tornado made of blue wind. This is exactly what happened to me when I found the Diamond of Gaia, says Lanny. When the tornado disappeared, Lori was laying, <laughs> was laying on the floor in her room. What? What happened? asks Lori. Whoa. She got up and fell backwards onto the bed. I feel strange. Lori then felt a bad pain coming from her back, and everyone saw an incredible sp uh, sight. Lori sprouted blue angel wings in her back, uh, from her back, and it inadvertently fired a blast of wind from her hand, and it blew a huge hole into the wall. Lori, you have wind powers, exclaims Lady. Lori regained her composure and gasped. I do? asks Lori. She fired another blast of wind out the window, and it blew some of the leaves off a tree in the front yard. I do! But why do my but why does my back feel so heavy? asks Lori. You grew uh, wings from your back, answers Lana. Yeah, you're an angel like JD, says Lola. This is okay, this is weird. JD uh, JD might have a little crush on Lori. Clyde style. Uh Lori saw the blue wings and screamed in horror. Hang on, Lori. I'll call JD. He'll know what to do, says Lincoln. My house at eleven thirteen PM. My cell phone rang. I woke up and I answered. Hello? I ask. JD, something has happened to Lori, says Lincoln. What happened, to, what happened, Lincoln? I ask. Lori sprouted the wind wings, and she has wind power. And Yeah, wind powers, answers Lincoln. <gasps> We're on our way. I hang up. Three. We got a code goddess. We got a code goddess diamond. Three wakes up, and we get dressed, and we go over to the loud house. We arrived in two minutes, and Lori told us every last detail. I was about to go to sleep when something smashed in my window, and then I was in a blue tornado, and then I blacked out, and the next thing I knew, I have wind powers in these wings, says Lori. Hmm, I say. I pull out my book on Legends of the World and find an interesting discovery. <clears throat> uh, Lori, you were given these powers by the wind of Ga'o. Ga'o, I say. Who was Ga'o? asks Lainey. The spirit of wind in Irocuous I mythology in that mythology, I say. The Irocuous Indians in New York, asks Lisa. Yes. Once every two hundred years it is said that Gao will send blue wind to, to bestow his powers of wind. But only those that are part of or descended from the Iroquois tribe can get these powers? Mr. Lynn, does the Loud family have any ties to the Iroquois tribe? In New York by blood, uh, I ask. Hmm, yes, I am part Iroquois. I hope I'm saying that right, and I hope they stop fucking using the word. But I not, but, but I not, re but I not really sure what the rest of our family heritage is. Says Mr. Lynn. Uh, says Lynn Senior. Hmm. Well, we'll have to check. Lisa, can we get a sample of everyone's spit for DNA testing and country ties? Asks Furry. I can do that. What do you mean country? T oh, whatever. I can do that, says Lisa. Lisa came back with 12 Petri dish dishes. Please provide saliva samples here, S uh, says Lisa. Oh, here we go. Lori, Lenny, Luna. Yeah, Lori, Lenny, Luna, Luann, Lynn Jr., Lincoln, Lucy, Laney, Lana, and Lola. Lana and Lola. Why do they do that? Why do they do Lana and Lola as their own... Whatever. Lisa, Lily, Lynn Sr., and Rita all put spit in each dish. One dish for each family member... For each member of the family. Yes, that's... I gathered that as much. I'll have the result for your I'll have the result for you first thing in the morning, says Lisa. Thank you for telling us this, JD, says Lincoln. No problem, Lincoln. Uh, let's go let's get some sleep, I say. The next morning, Lisa calls us into the kitchen for the results of the heritage test. Here are the results. We are forty five percent Iroquois, twenty two percent British. Forty five Okay. I don't know. Something about that doesn't feel right. 22% British, 15% North Norwegian, 10% German, 7% Irish, 6% Icelandic, and 5% Scottish, says Lisa. The louds were shocked. I had no idea our heritage was tied to, to that many cultures. This is foreshadowing. Yeah. When, like, when like uh, fucking Lucy gets the Icelandic power of death, or, or Lola gets the German power of, I don't know, pageants? Is Lola? Yeah, yeah, of pageants. They can say, oh, well, it's because of our 10% German and our 6% Icelandic. God, I hate this. You guys have a big multicultural heritage, but Oroquius is the strongest culture you have, I say. 
conveniently. Yeah, that's quite an ancestry, says Vri. But I had no idea we had Ocreus in our blood, says Rita. I actually moved here from Harlem, New York, 30 years ago, says Lynn Sr. Okay. I've heard a lot of good things about Harlem in the legendary Harlem, Harlem Globetrotters, I say. I love the Harlem Glo Globetrotters. I'm having a stroke, says Lynn. She spins a basketball on her finger and does all sorts of tricks. Whoa, way to go, Lynn. Are, are we not getting a little off track, I say. You go, Junior, says Lynn Sr. Lucy, are you also part Transylvanian, I ask. What? No. No, what? that doesn't make sense. One per, like, if none, if none of you are Transylvanian, if, especially if, if neither of your parents are Transylvanian, then you can't be. I'm, I'm, this is stupid. I'm, I'm getting off track. I'm getting off track. I don't really know, but vampires usually live in Transylvania, says Lucy. Lloyd, this must be a huge shocker to have powers like me, JD, and Laney, says Vuri. Yeah, what will Bobby think, asks Lloyd. I'm sure he will accept this, conveniently. He and Ronnie Ann accepted, accepted that me, Vuri, and Laney have powers. That's true, Lloyd, says Lincoln. You've been given a great gift, Lloyd, and with great power <laughs> comes great responsibility, says Vuri. Says Vuri. You're right, guys. Thank you. But I don't think I can show my power as well, says Lori. I can answer that for you. <laughs> love is the key to controlling your powers. Your love for Bobby is very strong. It wor It's worked for me because I love my family and my friends. Isn't that sweet, says Laney. You're right. I love all of you, and I may be a bossy brat sometimes, but I still love you all, says Lori. Let's get Bobby and Ronnie Ann over here. They have to know, says Lincoln. 10.35 a.m. Bobby and Ronnie Ann arrived, and Bobby knocked on the door. Lori answered it. Hey, babe, says Bobby. Hey, Bobby, boo-boo bear. Come on in, says Lori. They came in. <laughs> hey, J uh, hey, J.D., says Ronnie Ann to me, obviously. Hey, Ronnie Ann. Now, the reason we called you here is because a lot of things have happened over the last 12 hours, but it primarily affects affected Lori the most, I say. What happened, babe? asks Bobby. Lori sighed, and she spread her blue angel wings and formed a mini tornado in her hand. Because, you know, she can't control her powers that well. Oh, but, but she loves, she, it's, her, it's her love, it's her love. My bad, my bad. Bobby and Ronnie Ann were shocked. Babe, you're an angel? asks Bobby. Lori, you have wings and wind powers. Cool, says Ronnie Ann, excited. Yes, I do, says Lori. She was blessed by the winds of Gao. Uh, I say, what is the winds of Gao? asks Bo Bobby. And I, here we go, explain it again. It's wind from Gao, the spirit of wind in Arocrius mythology. It gave Lori the powers of wind and winged flight, I say. We found out, uh, we found out that we're descended from the Arocrius Indians of northern New York, says Lincoln. Mr. Lynn moved here from the Har from Harlem 30 years ago, says Ray. It threw us all for a loop, dude, says Luna. Lincoln, I had no idea you were you were you are part Indian, says Ronnie Ann. Neither did me or my sisters, says Lincoln. I was shocked too, says Danny. <sighs> Thanks for the input. Babe. You are even more amazing with these powers, says Bobby. He kissed Lori, and it was truly a, a romantic sight. I've always wanted a big sister figure like Lori, says Ronnie Ann. Well, I mean, that doesn't change anything. She was already dating Bobby. Whatever. Things just got a lot different, did it? Did it? I say. The end. Another fan fiction completed. I want to do a special fan fiction involving some references to Native American myth. <laughs> Obviously. I also want to do something situa so, uh, do a special situation, like from one of my books at home. Until next time, this is JD signing off. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs>